Welcome to St. Mary's Parish in Barrie, Ontario for Holy Thursday, April the 9th, 2020, Thursday of the Lord's Supper. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We begin this evening the celebration of the Triduum, a Triduum like none other in our history, a time for us to be separate and apart and yet united in prayer, in hope, in longing for the nearness and the presence of God. And as we come together virtually, as we come together spiritually, as we pray together in one body of Christ, we remember the abundant mercy and compassion of our God. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you nourish us in word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we long for your return in glory at the end of time. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, and all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day, shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How can I repay the Lord? 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your son. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, knowing Jesus, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share in me. Simon Peter said to him, 
Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you are. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on the, his robe and returned to the table. Jesus said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Thursday in Holy Week is the day of the Eucharist. It's also a time to give thanks to God for our priesthood and for our call to service in the church. Hence, on the last night before Jesus died, he did two things. He celebrated the Mass of the Lord's Supper and the washing of the feet. Both actions are powerful symbol, symbols of Jesus' self-giving for all of us. We even continue to preserve these traditions from 2,000 years ago up to now. And tonight, I'm sure many churches would like to reenact the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet before the Last Supper. But this year, we won't have the ritual of the washing of the feet in this Mass. Probably, there is a temptation to reenact the washing of the feet as we used to do during Holy Thursdays. But instead, because of the new coronavirus in the world, we cannot. Instead, this time of pandemic, we are advised by the health authorities to wash our hands properly and more frequently while singing Happy Birthday to You or any other songs for 20 seconds. In the Bible, the true enemy of Jesus is not the Roman Empire not the religious leaders. The true enemy of Jesus is the devil. The war between Jesus and the devil is like our fight against COVID-19. I think it's easier to fight against the virus if it's on the outside of us. But when it gets inside of us, like the spiritual virus that gets inside Judas, it's, it could be difficult to fight against that spiritual virus. And probably we need a ventilator. And that ventilator is the Holy Spirit. The problem of us is that we cannot see the virus, our enemy, the invisible threat, like Judas, Jesus knew the evil spirit in Judas, as shown by his nervousness, his being evasive and being defensive. And the fight against virus becomes more difficult when there's no symptoms. As we have heard, some are carriers of virus without even knowing it. Like Peter, 
Peter shows normal gestures, but Satan also starts to work in him. When Peter said, I don't know him, I don't know Jesus, three times. In the gospel, Peter was stubborn. He doesn't want to be washed, and he doesn't want to be taught how to wash properly because he thinks that he's not a child anymore, that he needs to be taught how to wash the feet properly. If we can remember, at the beginning of the campaign of COVID-19, we are also like Peter. I know that we know lots of things, but we need to go back to the basics. Now, we are taught, we are reminded, and we are refreshed on how to properly wash our hands. Like Peter, when Peter refused, in the same way Jesus said to him, if you don't want to be washed, and if you don't want to know how to wash properly, you'll be defeated by Satan. And this convinced Peter. However, the other disciples were infected by the virus. It's a different kind of virus that they were infected. The virus of desiring the power and the authority of God. In all of these viruses, Jesus only defense against them is humility. It's the humility to wash and to teach the disciples how to wash like that of being a servant. Jesus knew what's going on around him because we know that he is a specialist of infectious sp spirit. If there's an infectious disease specialist, there's also an infectious spirit specialist, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus is the target of Satan to be overthrown, to fall, but Satan cannot do it. So Satan targeted and infected the key disciples of Christ. Peter, the leader of the disciples, and Judas, the treasurer of the group. And so is for us. We are the target of the virus. What to do? Jesus, on the night of the Last Supper, the institution of the Holy Eucharist, Jesus said, the best defense against the virus against Satan is his blood, given up for all, for all of us, for the forgiveness of sins. And he said, do this in memory of me. Do this to fight against Satan. A few days ago, probably about six days ago, Pope Francis spread the message to ask everyone, to ask all the Catholics to pray, to pray in our minds. I am vaccinated with the blood of Christ. No virus can touch me. I am vaccinated with the blood of Christ. No virus can touch me. This is the message from the Pope for all of us to have a defense against the new coronavirus. This would be the time that we would normally wash feet. This year, that is suspended.
throughout the church. And yet each of us have that mandato, that Monday, Thursday mandate to serve one another. And so maybe in this coming days at home, you can serve one another with a gesture of washing feet or washing hands of others in your household, a way to show that you wish to be of service to each other. My brothers and sisters, like the Israelites on the night before their deliverance, we gather in our homes to commemorate the Last Supper, knowing that the Lord is with us. Let us pray that we may pass over from death to life with Christ as we intercede for the needs of the church and our world. For all families of the church, gathered around Christ in their homes to be nourished by prayer, the scriptures, and spiritual communion. And for Pope Francis and all bishops as they proclaim the gospel with a Father's love for the sufferings of all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests and deacons, call to serve their people with love and humil humility as they open the sacred scriptures. And for those who minister among young people and the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering people of our world, for the gift of peace and hope for refugees in war situations, and for religious freedom for persecuted Christians and those of other faiths, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for the sick, strength for families, courage for caregivers, and for the Spirit's wisdom for leaders and medical teams making decisions for the common good in this time of pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an environment in families that will nurture the call of God, for the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for those who are sick, including Ted Land, Carol Ferrone, and Aileen Carroll, and for all the faithful departed, including Tibor Toth, Angela Quinney, and Jim Sullivan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of infinite compassion, who in the gift of your Son have caused us to pass over from sin and death in baptism. Transform us, we pray, in the image of your Son, that our sacrifices and works of loving service may bear witness to the reality of your love for the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May the, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink this blood, that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope and Thomas, our bishop, and all those who, hold, who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that your whole family, which we make to you 
as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect and make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most blessed, holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate, remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who through who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, 
Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these things good, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer one another a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the risen Lord who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we, we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We depart in silence until we gather for the Passion of the Lord on Friday at three o'clock. 